All right, y'all, today we are going to talk about what is called simple interest. So this is going to be starting our financial literacy unit. So interest is something that you are going uh, could either pay or you could earn. So if you earn, if you pay it, excuse me, this could be, for example, on a loan or credit card, something extra that you pay. So when you borrow money, if you go borrow money from the bank for a car, um, you're going to owe them a little bit extra. So let's say that you borrow $25,000. Well, they're lending, to, lending you that money, excuse me, and you're going to have to pay them a little extra interest over time so that they make, can make a profit from it, okay? So you're not just paying the $25,000 back, you're paying that $25,000 plus a little bit extra. Interest could also be money that you earn. So, for example, for this, this would be like if you had a savings account or any investments, anything like that. Saving accounts, investments. So, for example, if you put some money in an account and you have a saving account and there's a 3% interest rate, um, you're going to, you're kind of being rewarded for keeping that money in a safe place and not using it. So, over time, you're going to be earning interest. So, let's talk about how we're going to solve for interest. So I stands for interest. So interest is going to be found by taking our principal, multiplied by our rate, and multiplied by our time. Okay, so a couple things to know. Principal is what you start with. So, for example, if you were to get that car loan for $25,000, that's the principal that you started with. We're going to multiply it by the rate. So, let's say that it was a 4.5% rate. Well, we need to change that 4.5% to a decimal, and we'll review that here in a minute. And then you're going to multiply it by time, and the time always has to be in years. So, we need to make sure that we realize that the rate is as a decimal, and the time is in years in this formula. Okay? So we'll have a couple practice problems to help us out with. So let's say that we put $250 in your savings account. Attention. Sorry, hold on one second. All right, so she made a little uh, debut in our video today. Sorry about that, guys. It's after school and people are not getting to where they need to be. So let's keep going. So let's say that you put $250 into your savings account. Well, that's what you start with. Then the account earns 4% simple interest. So this is my rate as a percent. So we need to change that to a decimal here in a minute. And what's the interest you've earned after five years? Well, remember percent means out of 100. So if I have 4%, that's 4 hundredths or 0 0.04, because that's the tenths place and that's the hundredths place. The quickest way to change a percent to a decimal is go two times to the left, okay? So I think about this as the Dr. Pepper trick. So you start at uh, the P for percent, and we're going to go one, two steps back. This is pointing to that R. Got a little, got a little stuck. And then D for decimal. That doesn't really what Dr. Pepper stands for, the, de the decimal percent, but it's just a quick visual to help us out. So let's go ahead and figure out the interest. The interest that we have earned, because you were in a saving account, you're earning the money. So we start with $250. The rate was 4%, which is 4 hundredths, which is 4 hundredths, like that. And then we're going to multiply by time. And my time right here is five years. So you have to make sure your rate is a decimal and your time is in a in years, excuse me. So percent change to that to a decimal. And we'll use our calculator just for today. So we need two hundred and fifty principal times four hundredths times five. So your interest would be fifty dollars. And that represents fifty dollars earned 
because you put that money in a savings account. It's not money that extra you spent, it's money that you actually earned, okay? So you'd have to be careful on this because if this were multiple choice, if you did 250 times four and then times five, that would probably be a trick answer if you forgot to change that rate, that percent to a decimal, okay? Well, now let's think about what's the total balance. So if we want the total balance of your bank account after years, we're gonna take our interest that we earned of that $50 and our original, which is our principal amount, what we started with, and we started with $250. So after five years, by you just investing your money and leaving that money there, you now have $300. So stop and think about it. You have $250, set that aside, let that money kind of work for you and get $50 interest. All you did was sit and wait, and now you've earned $50 over time. And it doesn't sound like a lot. It's only $10 per year, but it's better than nothing. As well as if you put more into your bank, the more that you put in, the more money you're going to get back. So that's something to think about. All right, let's look at a couple different examples. This kind of got blurred up, but we'll, I'll read that to you all what it was supposed to say kind of overlapped. All right, so this one says, what is the interest that will be charged for the end of charge on the loan at the end of the year? So that kind of got messed up, but this says, what is the interest that will be charged on the loan, make this a little better, at the end of year one? Okay, we'll t get to this question in just a minute. So Justin borrows $20,580 from the bank to buy a new car. The loan has an 8.5 interest rate. So we want to first figure out the interest. So how much he's borrowing is going to be the principal. So he's paying that back with interest. So 20580 The rate, remember, we're going to change that percent to a decimal. So it's an 8.5%. So the first thing we do is we drop the percent sign and we move the decimal two times to the left. So there is nothing right there. The error a little bit clearer. So 0 0.085. So zero and eighty zero and eighty-five thousandths. I said it right, but I was writing it wrong. So we move that decimal twice to the left, so 0 0.085. Then the time in years. They just want to know about one year. Okay, so let's figure out what our interest is. So we take our principal, $20,580 times 8.5% or 0 .085, 85 thousandths, times one year. And we're going to get $1,749.30. Okay, so what that represents is the interest, the additional cost, because he's borrowing money. So if you're borrowing money, this is the money that's going to go extra to the loan to the company or the bank that he borrowed it from. Okay, this part, these questions kind of got overlapped. So this said, what would be, so part of these questions, part of these words, excuse me, is supposed to go with this question. This is says, what would be the total balance on a loan at the end of the year if no payments were made? So if you didn't make any additional payments for that, um, we're going to go ahead and look and see what we've got. So your interest that you, additional payment is $1,749.30. So if no payments were made, that means that you still owe that full amount. Okay, hopefully you make your payments so you don't, get more into debt, but we're just saying if no payments were made, how much do you owe it completely? Then the original amount or the principal would be $20,580 and line that up. So we can line that up, but just for time's sake, we'll use our calculator. Just have to remember how to add and subtract, multiply and divide with decimals. So $1,749.30 $20,580 is going to be $22,329.30. Okay, so this is the total amount he owes. 
total amount owed. Okay? So remember, when you're borrowing money, that interest is going to be an additional cost. When you're investing your money, it's going to be extra money that you earn. Okay? So basically, whenever you want to find your total, so if they have a question that asks about total, the total itself, you take your interest and you add your principal. That's exactly what we did right here. Your interest, we add the principal, you got the total. Or you can think about the letters TIP, T-I-P. Okay, so total is equal to your interest plus your principal. All right, y'all, thanks for tuning in. I hope this was helpful, and as always, make sure you reach out to your teacher if and when you do need any help. Good luck.